everybody. Welcome to a spring 2014 SWAT review. My name is Kate, otherwise known as Narataki. And I'm Alan, otherwise known as Hisui. We are from ReverseThieves.com. You can go there to get other SWAT reviews, our monthly speakeasy podcast, as well as three plus blog posts every week. This time we're looking at M3, the dark metal from Studio Satellite, and it is streaming on dasuke.net. And this one has pedigree, I guess you could say, that that sounds very intriguing. Um, Junichi Sato is working on it. Mario Kata is working on it. And then it has these robot designs from Shoji Kawamori. So it's like got some, you know, people behind it. But I feel like the first episode comes off very... Meh. Kind of like paint by numbers averageness to it. It's about this future where... There's basically this dark rift that has opened up and it's slowly growing and they're keeping it in check for now. But in the way that they've just slowed the progress of the growth more than they they're beating it back or or even keeping it from growing. And monsters are coming through this and it seems like it's like the ghost or the spirit of people and then the monsters are kind of using that to like take form or i mean obviously it's not explained yet because well, well, they it's a did, major mystery but they did say that anybody who dies there becomes those abomination creatures and there's also those ghosts that seem to lead them and our group of teenagers are at the very beginning kind of in a very quick process are a bunch of them are chosen to become pilots for this program with these robots that will help you know it's like the newest line of defense and they have these special spike drivers that if they you know get the monsters basically in their weak point they'll uh, finally die because otherwise they just regenerate too quickly and that's what happened in this episode. There's some teenagers. Well, the not all of them are teenagers because one of them was a member of the staff, like the cre- like the cleaning crew of the school that they were at, and one of them was like a pilot. But, but I don't. They think... seem like they're still teenagers. Mm-hmm. Like even though. It's almost like they for you know they didn't go to high school instead they did these other things but now they've been chosen for this program somehow I don't I don't know really and uh, apparently we only see four of them well five of them by the end but apparently there were like nine of them or seven of them I don't remember there were a couple more that we saw pictures of but we haven't been introduced to in the series. There's some really weak CG in the show. This is mitigated by having a lot of night scenes. <laughs> or it's just really dark in the stream. I'm not sure. One or the other. Me and my roommate, after you went downstairs, we checked another show. We watched that horrible irregular at the magic school. Just for a few seconds to check the video quality. I see. And... Yeah, because I wanted to check it to something we had seen and was very crisp on Crunchyroll. The quality is less and it has like, you know, it looks like a VHS fan sub as opposed to uh, what it looked like on Crunchyroll. I feel like that almost works in the favor of this show, though, because it doesn't feel modern. It almost feels like it's from like a, an era or two, you know, back. Like, you're like, oh, you never saw M3. <laughs> yeah, it came out, like, in the early 90s. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm kind of struggling with what to say about the episode. I don't feel like... The, the character interactions are okay. The, the main guy, he is main guy material. That, that one girl, the, the part-time worker girl, she's interesting if only because she seems to have a real agenda. And I don't know what it is. And I hope it's not just like, I have a crush on this dude because she seems like she's working like an angle, which like is she mildly really, interesting. She really wants him to think that she's like a real cutie patootie and like keeps like, you <laughs> and yeah acting really ditzy but she's 
not. So I thought that was interesting. There's also the pilot woman who seemed all, you know, like she's the one who has the most experience. And, and seemed kind of resentful. She was like, I'm already a pilot, so I don't know why they're making me go to this school. So both of them, I thought, were the more in- the most interesting of the people we were introduced to. This basically guy, friend slash rival guy. Like, they have a friendly rivalry at this point. And he seems to get dragged along with the main character dude. And then there's, like, Mouse Girl who gets, like, a weird fan service scene where she gets, like... Hit with baseballs. Yeah, which was weird. Um, oh, and she's into the occult. Because she's the one who mentions, If you ever see a ghost from the realm, then you will die nine days later. Um, the music I thought was good in the series. What we could hear of it. And like it had a really haunting song at the end because, of course, they do meet one of these corpses... And it seems to retain some of its human memory. Because at the very beginning, the main guy gets this locket when one of the monsters is being fought in front of him. and But it isn't killed. And later on, when they fight that monster later on, they realize it's not going after them. It's trying to find that locket. And it's uh, this mother and daughter. And they're like, oh, obviously that monster was probably the mother and she wanted to lock it back so they seem to still retain some of their humanity even in this monstrous form and that's supposed to be the big thing takeaway we get from it other than a ghost appearing at the end and then being like bum 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 they've seen a ghost so technically they should only have nine more days to live that's interesting, at least. I feel like that maybe ha- is what has it going for it. I, f- I want to watch more of this, but mostly because of who's working on it and just giving it a chance, as opposed to this first episode, which I thought was pretty weak. And just, it just felt so average. Yeah, there's nothing really bad about the show. Like, I can't say this was, like, super weak or this, other than, like, once again, the CG. But nothing about it also was like, yeah, this was awesome, or this character was really cool. There were, like, characters like, this character might be cool if we learn more about them, but right now they're not bad. (laughs) Oh, and the main character, yeah. The only thing about him is he seems to have some complex about his brother who probably died as a pilot in, you know, basically the Dark Realm. But that's pretty much his whole thing is basically, Nissan! (laughs) It's a show. All right, see you guys next time.